Hey everyone, this is Doug Zyda Rose for Game Shampoo. And mainly uh, continuing with the uh, uh yeah, I'm continuing with the footage from last time. There's a reason for that. And that's that I A had more footage than I initially thought, and B realized just how big of a freaking uh video I'm working on for Skyrim Dawnguard. This this game this mission this is one of the bigger ones. This is reminding me of when for Orcs I was covering the Silver Shroud in Fallout 4. That game that one mission in that game took me about two hours to complete. There's footage of the entire run all two hours. I can press that down to a little over an hour. You do that by, oh, lots of just tweak. You know, adjust the speed settings as much as possible. Now, it's a lot of work just doing the recording. Editing isn't so bad at times, but there are others where it's yeah, it, it catches up to you hard. But yeah, so I need it. Now that's why there are uh, three episodes of this wonderful game this time. So uh, now that I've explained myself, I may as well focus on the gameplay and you know, what I'm working on. Now I've got the speed booster. I'm trying to see where I can use it exploring more and more, and <laughs> mainly, oh man, I'm grateful I get to comment on what I was doing, because there are times I do really good, there are times I'm just gonna, yeah, wow, <sighs> I mean, yeah, there have been times where I've tried to pass off, kind of working, that I recorded and then was playing around. Oh, this room. This room is really interesting to me. Now, watch my health when I'm in the water. It's going up. I also notice I've tweaked my uh, settings with Dark Samus's gun so I can shoot really fast. No, I'm not button mashing I'm using turbo. I know how fast I can go, and I'm a lot faster with turbo. Now, I need to emulate this unless I get a reproduction cart and you know, my, my poor Super Nintendo, I don't want to subject it to a reproduction cart. That's what killed my first Dreamcast. I attempted something and then the Dreamcast stopped working. It was bad. It really sucked because way back when the Dreamcast was new-ish. I was, yeah, I was like 18. Yeah, I was 18 at the time. I was working for Target. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, that was a good year. Uh, I just graduated high school. I was getting ready to go off to college. And I'm living at home, so... I actually have disposable income for once. Which was a really new thing for me, but you know, being a gamer as long as I have, I was kind of like, yes, yes, uh, I would like to get a Dreamcast, because I'd played it, I'd fallen in love with what the system offered. So, uh, once I was, had some money and I'd sorted a couple things, that's exactly what I did. I bought a Dreamcast. So, yeah, that, that system's always going to hold a special place in my heart. I haven't done any Dreamcast games yet for this channel, but believe me, they're on the docket. That's something I will do. Okay, shifting out of story time. So, right now I'm just exploring, figuring out what to do, and... I'm honestly having to do a fair bit of research. Oh, right. Uh, yeah. 
I was recording and real life stuff came up there, so I needed to step away and I was really grateful I was just doing gameplay recording. And when I'm doing gameplay recording as well as doing audio recording, you know, with the video, understand there's more going on here. Grand total, I'm genuinely running like three, four programs. If you ever wanted to know like what I'm doing behind the scenes, all this stuff, you know, the gameplay footage and actually the camera footage as well, you know, what I'm doing here, hi, it's all recorded through one program. All the sound is getting channeled through a completely different one. And of course, I'm running my emulator. All right, uh, if anyone wondering, it's Zenes. I've been using it for a very long time. It's what initially let me beat some games that I absolutely fell in love with, like uh, Mega Man, well, the entire Mega Man X series. I got to play all those on Super Nintendo. Friends of mine owned them. I never did. Only later did I learn that if I managed to buy the, uh, ah, the Super Nintendo version of Mega Man X3, that thing would be worth a lot. Like, a lot, a lot. Like, way more than I thought it was going to. Ah. Okay, so uh, shifting away from what I was talking about to what's going on. Now, as you saw earlier, I was investigating the secrets around that particular exit. Now, to actually get what I want from there, I need to do a spark shine. Now, that's the technique where I go running, Samus starts getting those after images, you kneel from the right, and then Samus has a charge. Using that charge, it only lasts maybe five seconds? It's really short. I have no idea. Huh, I actually could figure it out at this point. Yeah, okay, well, yeah, I'm not gonna time it. I'm just gonna comment on what I'm doing. Right here, I'm just experimenting, figuring out, okay, what can I do? How can I get this to start working? There is so much experimentation you gotta do at times to get the result you want. Also, those uh, Metroids. They're the Phazon Metroids. They actually interfere with me shooting. They will block my shots. If you were really paying attention when I was running around outside, I'm working to get the uh, high jump boots. That's what it is, the high jump boots. You'll, you might have noticed that particular detail. Now, another unique detail about this version of Metroid is using the spark shine costs you health. There's only so much I can do. It's gonna come up again, you know, toward the end of the, uh, this recording, but it's an important detail. So, consulting where to go, trying to figure out what to do. Because there is still a lot of this area to explore. <laughs> I'm still getting better at wall jumping. I will go on endlessly about that particular one. It's also really nice having a reserve tank. I know I got a reason I'm just forgetting when. My memory's bad at that. It's really bad at uh, uh, sequencing. Okay. Yeah, I know what's through there. It's just leaning back into the previous room that I was just in. That more. So, yeah, time to explore some more. I've got a lot more jump. Oh yeah. Yeah, here I'm just seeing if I can freeze it and use that to get high enough just straight up. Almost. I need a wall jump to make the height I'm after easily. And before this room scared me. Hey, well, I've got the dark beam on, it continues to scare me. The moment I take dark beam off, 
thus making it so I can shoot a lot faster. And again, I'm using turbo here, where I just start ripping through these things. It also eliminates the lag that this room had. Now, this is emulated. It's still working within the constraints of what the Super Nintendo is specced. Technically, it's capable of a lot more, but you can't get everything. Um, yeah, there are probably emulators out there which actually increase the capabilities of the Super Nintendo based on what your computer can do, but I'm looking for a decently accurate emulator. So if I'm if my Super Nintendo would be chugging, I want the program to be chugging. It's a weird dichotomy of things, but it's also the truth. Hmm. Oh hey, sounds from Discord. Or uh, knowing what I know, that was probably uh EX raid in my area. Hmm. I'm gonna hit that up. Oh. A raid at an EX gym. There we go. Alright, so back into the Omni, um, oh, Omni Drift. And I, it remains, I love, like, how Metroid Fusion has influenced Super Metroid Phase on those enemies, the kind of the spheres with all the gas coming out. They're from Metroid Fusion. If I ever find a really good ROM hack of that, I will gladly play it. I might just want to get my, uh... Oh, also, I just ran by a missile unlock. I need to look into that. Huh, that would be fun. Uh, power bomb. Power bomb. Just bombs. I really want bombs. It's not just for the infinite bomb jump, as much fun as that is. It does allow you to break a lot of Super Metroid, though it does take a lot of skill to pull off, too. Ah, yeah, so I'm chasing after that. Different missile tanks, uh, different setups. Yeah, I investigate. It is revealed to be speed booster blocks. That is a destroyable block. the fact. But, you know, this is one of those cases where I need to be sure to put something out and keep the YouTube gods happy. If I don't, that's setting my work back. And I'm trying very hard to keep everything going for. You know what? But I feel bad when I miss a weekday. Because you know, the weekends, they're, they're mine. That gives me a chance to actually, like, record more and, you know, live life. I'll tell you, especially as a writer, part of my philosophy is I need to be out there and living, enjoying and experiencing what's there. It's the only way you're really actually gonna have a lot to say or honestly have a lot to write about. Um, you're stuck writing what you know. You can learn an awful lot and expand what you know immensely, but you, know, you still gotta go out there and find it. That's just how things are. Okay, uh, wax philosophically. So, here the big conundrum is space. Now I'll point something out which isn't immediately obvious. The door and the left hand and that end of the corridor stays open. I haven't shot it. It just stays open. That's a piece of this whole puzzle. Now, this this area is really good for recharging and kind of getting your supplies back. Now, let's take a look at the room I find myself in here. I look. Speed booster blocks. 
I get the idea. Hey, is there enough space between here and there that I might be able to get the charge going? The answer, no. I'm pretty sure here, hey, if I kill everything, maybe I can get a little more space. I know somewhere in my head, no. This isn't gonna work. It was a little frustrating just because things. I also really need to remember to set my recording program to 60 FPS and not 30 FPS. This game runs... Ah, I know the frame rate. I've heard the frame rate. I need to go back into like Super Metroid speedrun stuff so I can learn the frame rate. That way I can actually set this to match properly. Uh, I love my program and that I can actually customize the frame rate on recording. Naturally, the more frames, the bigger the files, the more time it takes to upload. But, eh, it's worth it. Because it's a lot of fun to do this stuff. And, ah uh, yes, here's another idea. I want to see about freezing one of those is that as a platform. The problem is I need to shoot it twice. Two times. And at the rate the weapon fires, it's not fast enough. This is using turbo, so it's firing as fast as it can manage. Short of me probably tweaking the crap out of the beam, that wasn't gonna work. So, uh, there. Uh, I've seen the solution. I haven't put everything together yet. Ah, here we go. Now I'm actually like moving into the solution. As you can see, there's speed booster blocks. More speed booster blocks. Yet more speed booster blocks. And little things. I can freeze. Alright, turn off the x-ray visor because that uses the same button as your own. There we go. Let's head on the solution. Now I'm trying to go from the save state and trigger spark shine. I've almost got the solution. Almost. I'm just a little off. And I do get it. It looks really awesome. I will say that. <laughs> and yeah, it remains. I use save states for faster iterations. Now I've, now I've shown I can get there. I can do this. Now I just need to iterate on it and properly execute. If you've ever seen like tasses. I will say those things are amazing and wonderful to watch. I really enjoy watching them. Well, that's where some of these game ideas come from. It's like, okay, yeah, I know I can't hit that level of play, but it's a really fun game. They're showing some great concept work here. I want to see what I can do. Of course, also, some of what I'm doing is, hey, that's a really cool game. I want to play it. Now, I came across this hack uh, for Super Metroid Phase On on through uh, Snestrum, another YouTube channel. Yeah, I know. I'm. I just did a whole thing promoting a, a streamer and a podcast. And actually, when this is coming out Thursday, I should be on that podcast. It remains if you actually want to hear the curse and just very much chat and hang out with an old friend, listen to it. I can tell you Steve and I had a blast talking, and yeah, it circles around Rocky Horror, but it's a common thing we did. Mind, way back then, he was on cast, I wasn't. Ew. <laughs> and I've hit the end of my footage, that's why I'm full screen now. At any rate, uh, thank you very much for watching. I certainly hope you enjoyed this, and I definitely hope you 
like the next episode, well, <laughs> the next section of the Elder Scrolls Skyrim Dawn Guard walkthrough. It's huge. <laughs> I'm still working on recording it. It is that big. As always, please like, comment, subscribe. If you have suggestions, hit me up on Twitter at Zadane Rose or Zadan Rose. I was never clear on how to pronounce it. I say Zadane. Oh so yeah, take care and I'll see you next time.